Hello, friends. Good morning. This is Gautam Kuluri from CIP, Study Abroad and Immigration Expert. Well, interesting update here from the government of Canada. There's been a lot of concerns about uh, the number of international students, the quality of international students coming in, and to ensure that the quality of international students is, uh, you know, uh, I would say to uphold the integrity of the international student program. Uh, the government of Canada has been discussing many options, and today, Minister Fraser, uh, you know, Minister Mark Miller, it's very interesting. You know, previously, a couple of months ago, Minister Fraser was applauding international students. They have decreased the English requirements, language proficiency requirements. They have increased uh, the number of working hours, right? And uh, today. There's since the last two months, there's been a lot of price, uh, you know, discussions on uh, the housing crisis, and uh, very unfortunate, right? There are so many uh, immigrants coming in, refugees coming in, right, from India, from I'm sorry, from you know, students from India, but also refugees from Afghanistan, Syria, Sudan, Latin America, Ukraine, Palestine, and all that. You know, but international students have been made the scapegoat for that, unfortunately. So today the minister made, there's been discussions about caps. Uh, so, uh, you know, so minister announced that they'll be capping the number of international students for the next two years. So let's go through this. Can you, can you hear me, Sandeep? Yes, I know. Okay, no, from the YouTube, if I share... Okay, now you should be able to hear. Yeah. I want to welcome everyone to my writing. Yes. Souhaiter la bienvenue à tout le monde dans mon mon beau comté de Ville-Marie, le sud-ouest des Sœurs. Évidemment, j'ai reconnu le territoire autochtone en gagnant Gaha. International students are a valuable asset to this country. They are bright young individuals that enrich our communities and bring significant social, cultural, and economic benefits. They deserve the best. They deserve world-class academic experiences that they sought out and hoped for. And Canada is renowned for that. Sadly, this has not always been the case. Pour que ces avantages perdurent et que le Canada conserve sa réputation mondiale, nous devons nous attaquer aux problèmes récents qui ont rendu, rendu certains étudiants vulnérables et ont porté atteinte à l'intégrité de notre programme pour les étudiants internationaux. It's unacceptable that some private institutions have taken advantage of international students by operating under resourced campuses, lacking supports for students, and charging high tuition fees, all the while significantly increasing their intake of international students. Cette augmentation rapide exerce également so guys, this this is big when it comes to the public-private partnership. So what happened, uh, uh, you know, when the many uh, probably about ten years ago, all the public colleges started signing up with private colleges in Canada, and they were doing what in in India we usually have the system where uh, you know affiliated, right? There is Usmania University or JNTU, and there are many private institutions which have come in affiliated to the university. So the similar concept here, public-private partnerships, for example, Canada College, St. Lawrence, and all these colleges, they actually came up. And, uh, you know, many students, it was like more like a tuition center, coaching center with 10 to 15 classrooms. And uh, uh, people did not really have the quality services, quality education. There's been big issues with this. So that has been you know, and, and that has really effectively uh, made a very negative impact on the quality of the students. So that is that is something which has been ongoing and that has been expected. So these colleges most likely will be wrapped up in the next one or two years and the quality will be cut off. Également une pression sur le logement, les soins de santé et d'autres services. Si la réglementation des établissements d'enseignement relève des provinces, et des territoires, certains d'entre eux 
ont laissé perdurer ce phénomène inacceptable pendant trop longtemps. Today, I am announcing three principal measures. One, a temporary two-year cap on new international student permits. It is the latest in a series of measures to improve program integrity and set international students up for the success in order to maintain uh, a sustainable level of temporary residence in Canada as well. To ensure that there is no further growth in the number of international students in Canada for 2024, we are setting a national application intake cap for a period of two years. So here the minister says that they have they are putting a two-year cap on the number of study visas which will be issued. But, uh, you know, again, for you guys to understand, the cap has already been achieved. I was just talking a few minutes ago. Let me just share you another screen. This is the document which was actually issued, uh, posted by IRCC. So if you look into the number of students, so this is the number of the students which have been. So for the September intake, Canada had from India, these are the numbers from, in, from all the countries. And this number, this is what I've highlighted. This is for India. So for the September intake, 108,940 study permits were issued. So it's almost about 1,8,000 study permits were issued for September. And for this October and November, only 14,910 were issued. So there was an 86% decrease in the number of study permits. So in, uh, instead of almost about 80 to 100,000, only 14,900 were issued. So wh why this happened? Due to the Palestinian issue between and the diplomatic issue between the Indian and Canadian government. So there's been so much of media coverage about Canada, about concerns that Khalistani separatists might actually hurt Hindus and the Canada is not safe because the government is being soft on Khalistan uh, supporters. There's been a huge concern. So effectively, if we see the numbers for, uh, you know, these are the students who actually are for January 24 intake. So January 24 intake, has already been reduced for Jan. So for the year 24, the number of study permits has actually effectively been cut down by about 80,000. So previously, if it was 100,000, now we only see a, you know, 15,000. So the 35% target, which IRCC is talking about the cap they want to achieve is already been accomplished due to the diplomatic issue India and Canada based on uh, you know on the Khalistani support what happened there's been so much so numbers have already had a big hit right and also because of the GIC right G after that for this was for January intake and now for May intake took a big hit already because people were not ready with the 20,000 GIC. So 20,000 GIC, right? It is not the money the government is taking. It is not the money which you will be losing. It will be coming in to support your expenses, your tuition fees, right? So basically, if you were paying 10,000 GIC, there is another additional 10,000, which students have to add and this will support your living expenses. And if you're going for a second year program, that will cover towards your tuition fees. Okay, so again, not really big issue, but for Indian students, there are many Indian students, you guys are lucky because we have banks in India, right? And you can get education loans. However, in countries like Brazil, Thais last time we were talking with her last week and she mentioned that it is very difficult for people out there to get $20,000 up front, right? Same with Philippines, same with Nepal, for all these countries, it is very difficult to arrange this 20,000 without bank loans. So Indian students, because of the developed banking system, you guys are very fortunate and it is definitely, you know, a challenge for other countries. Yes, there will be some students who do not have collaterals who might be affected in getting the bank loans, but 
But here issue is the main intake has already been cut. So most colleges are already filled up for main take, right? They already have the process. Most students are already decided if, if they want to go for May. So there is also a huge cut in the May as well. So numbers, the cap is not really something which is going to hurt this year because I don't think even there will be lesser numbers. I'll be surprised because of the January intake almost down by 80,000 and the GIC, usually if there were about 3 lakh students from India, I would be surprised in 2024 if we have even 100,000 or 1 lakh students from India, right? So Indian students contribute to almost about 50 to 60 percent of the international students coming to Canada. So because the January intake has been affected due to the Canada-India diplomatic Palestine issue, and then the main intake has been affected to, due to the uh, you know, GIC, it is, unfortunately, you know, cap is something which I'm not sure if it makes sense. Yeah, let me just, uh, let, let me continue this video, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead. For 2024, the cap is expected to result in approximately 364,000 approved study permits, a decrease of 35% from 2023. In the spirit of fairness, we are also allocating the cap space by province based on population, such as that some provinces will see much more significant reductions. So basically, every province in Canada will have a cap a limit to the number of international students they can take. We'll continue to work closely with those provinces and territories to put these measures into place as they will be responsible for determining how the cap is distributed between its designated learning institutions that they have jurisdiction over. I've had productive conversations in particular with British Columbia and Ontario already and we all recognize that more needs to be done to protect the integrity of our system while supporting international students. In addition, effective immediately, Applicants must provide a provincial attestation with their study permit application. At the same time, the cap will not apply to students in graduate levels of studies, including masters and doctoral students. Those are the people we're looking for. Study permit applications at the elementary and secondary school levels will also be exempt. So what your minister mentioned was, so before when we had this Quebec, uh, you know, Mont uh, Quebec international students, there was a process called CAQ. So international students, before they apply for the study permit, they also had to apply for a process called CAQ, which is an approval from the province of Quebec. So the same system is going to be put in place now for, the, for all the international students coming to different provinces. So this will, uh, the, uh, we haven't seen, uh, you know, we, uh, we will have to wait for more updates and see what is happening. But uh, you know, the process, the application process, we are not really sure about what is going to happen. Uh, you know, what is the process, how to do it, how to get this provincial attestation. We'll have to wait and see for uh, more updates here. Will not apply to students in graduate levels of studies, including masters and doctoral students. Those are the people we're looking for. Study permit applications at the elementary and secondary school levels will also be exempt. So the same time the cap will not apply to students in graduate levels so the cap so if you are coming for masters phd and elementary schools so the international student will cap will not apply so let's go through this so the the government is only limiting this to the colleges the cap and not to the universities Applicants must provide a provincial attestation with their study permit application. At the same time, the cap will not apply to students in graduate levels of studies, including masters and doctoral students. Those are the people we're looking for. Study permit applications at the elementary and secondary school levels will also be exempt. Deuxièmement, afin de mieux aligner le programme de permis de travail post diplôme avec l'intégrité du système, nous modifions également les critères d'éligibilité. D'un à partir du 1er septembre 2024. Les étudiants internationaux qui commencent un programme d'études faisant partie d'un accord de licence de programme d'études ne seront plus admissibles à un permis de travail post-diplôme après l'obtention de leur diplôme. 
dans le cadre de ces accords, les étudiants fréquentent un établissement privé qui a été autorisé à dispenser le programme d'études d'un établissement public associé. Ces programmes ont, con ont connu une croissance significative en attirant des étudiants internationaux ces dernières années, bien qu'ils soient moins surveillés que les collèges publics et qui constituent une échappatoire en ce qui concerne l'éligibilité au permis de travail après l'obtention du diplôme. To repeat, as of September 1st of this year, postgraduate work permits will no longer be available to public private institution models. Thirdly, in the coming weeks, Effective from the 1st of September this year, 2024, students who study in PPPs, that is the satellite campuses, small campuses where they are, they will no longer be eligible. So postgraduate work permit will not be eligible for students who study the, in the small colleges. So make sure that you only focus on the primary which is the main campuses. Okay, this is interesting. Let's, we will have more updates the next couple of days from all these colleges and we'll try to have a transition process for all the students who are enrolled in Maine. So let's go to the statement again. This year, postgraduate work permits will no longer be available to public private institution models. Thirdly, des étudiants internationaux, ces dernières années, bien qu'ils soient moins surveillés que les collèges publics et qui constituent une échappatoire en ce qui concerne l'éligibilité au permis de travail après l'obtention du diplôme. To repeat, as of September 1st of this year, postgraduate work permits will no longer be available to public private institution models. Thirdly, so this is interesting, like we need further clarification as to 1st of September, students who join this because there should be a transition mechanism, hopefully. So students who might be enrolling from 1st of September might be the case. So that current students who are already in the transition or already enrolled might still be eligible. So let's wait for a clarification on that. In the coming weeks, we'll be announcing that open work permits will only be allowed and be available to spouses of international students enrolled in master's and doctoral programs, as well as professional programs such as medicine and law. Spouse yeah, so this is also a big update, just like the UK has done. Spouse Open Work Permit Program will be limited to students who study master's. Okay, so students, if you are a student currently studying in a college for a PG diploma, you might not be able to bring your spouse until you get to your postgraduate work permit, until you find a full-time job, right? This is what his UK has done. Canada is replicating the same model. So if you come here for your studies in a college, you might not be able to bring your spouses until you get your full-time job. Spouses of international students enrolled in other levels of study, including undergraduate and college programs, will no longer be eligible. To be clear, the cap will not apply to applicants within Canada looking to extend their studies, as it wouldn't be fair to prevent someone from finishing the program, nor will the cap have an effect on study permit holders currently in Canada. These temporary measures so if you are currently in Canada already as an international student or as a spouse open work permit holder, this cap, this will not apply to you guys. This will be in place for two years and the number of new study permit applications that will be accepted in 2025 will be reassessed at the end of this year. So 2025, there will be another update as to the Number of international students. Continuons en outre à travailler avec les provinces et les territoires, les établissements d'enseignement désignés, les acteurs de l'éducation nationale, des réformes plus larges sur l'élaboration d'une voie plus durable pour les étudiants internationaux, y compris la finalisation du cadre des établissements reconnus que j'avais annoncé euh, plus tôt, euh, plus tard l'année dernière. 
la détermination d'un niveau durable à long terme d'étudiants internationaux et la garantie que les établissements d'enseignement postsecondaire sont en mesure de fournir les niveaux adéquats de logement pour les étudiants. S'appuyant sur d'autres réformes du programme des étudiants étrangers, l'annonce d'aujourd'hui vise à protéger un système qui a ouvert la voie à des abus, ainsi qu'à soutenir une croissance démographique durable au Canada. To be absolutely clear, these measures are not against individual international students. They are to ensure that as future students arrive in Canada, they receive the quality of education that they signed up for and the hope that they were provided in their home countries. It would be a disservice to welcome international students in Canada knowing not all of them are getting the resources they need to succeed in Canada and having them return home disillusioned and disappointed in Canada's education system. Allowing bad actors to continue their operations would be a disservice to all the good institutions who pride themselves in providing a top-tier academic experience. Thank you. Looking forward Can you to the clarify, questions. Minister, um, will we see, uh, uh, so right now we have over a million foreign students. Are the measures you are unveiling today, does that mean there will be less students as of September, or is it that the increase will be slower? And how many students will we see by the end of this year in Canada? So you asked sort of three things, Marika. Permit, permits are issued on a three-year basis, so the one million number is the number of permits that have been issued over a three-year period. Those people that are getting out of the three-year programs uh, will reflect, uh, will be reflected in, it'll be a reflection of a decrease, a 35% decrease compared to those people that are graduating from these programs. So the net intake will, will show that decrease of 35%. There's some room there uh, to work with some, of, uh, with some of the provinces to make sure that they are actually decreasing. But what the cap actually does is, is twofold. It's a national cap, but it's spread out according by population by province. So some provinces will actually have some room to go up if they so choose, uh, but the provinces that have been most heavily affected will have to decre decrease by about 50 uh, and, and, and perhaps even fit more than 50 percent when it comes to new incoming people. Have you been seeing the effects concrete of this new measure on the penury of logement that we have in Qu'est-ce que ça va changer? Ben, de, de un, aujourd'hui, ce n'est pas une annonce en logement. Je, je parle principalement d'une annonce euh, d'un système de visa qui était désigné pour avoir des gens des, qui sont euh, très intelligents, des jeunes, pour venir ici pour étudier dans le domaine postsecondaire. Euh, évidemment, on sait qu'avec le volume dans certaines provinces, dans certaines villes, il y a eu un impact euh, sur, les, sur le logement, c'est clair. La diminution euh, du volume va avoir un impact euh, sur les loyers principalement, euh, mais ce n'est pas le cas que du jour au lendemain, les prix et l'abordabilité vont être réglés à cause du fait qu'on a réglé ou qu'on a diminué le nombre d'étudiants internationaux qui s'en viennent au Canada. C'est un élément, c'est un impact, mais l'impact puis le motif principal aujourd'hui, euh, c'est d'enrayer un système qui, euh, qui, qui, qui a perdu le contrôle. Au Québec, on fait des choses un peu différemment. Quel est l'impact de ce qui <coughs> maintenant sur le Québec? Comment ça va affecter? Ben, le, le, le cap s'applique au Québec, mais il, il reste qu'au Québec, il y a du lest, il, y a, il y a de la place. Et le Québec, en théorie, a la capacité, aura la capacité d'augmenter. Ce sera le cas aussi euh, pour les territoires. Euh, pour l'Alberta et, et la Saskatchewan. Vous allez juste apprendre les chiffres que j'ai cités aujourd'hui, sortez vos calculatrices, puis regardez les populations dans les provinces pour voir un peu où les, 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 le problème réside. Mais c'est clair que, en ce qui a trait aux chiffres, c'est disproportionné dans certaines provinces, dont la Nouvelle-Écosse, euh, au Nouveau-Brunswick, en, euh, en Ontario, puis euh, en Colombie-Britannique. I, I'd say a couple things. Uh, clearly, there has not been action as quickly as we wanted it to be taken. Uh, we first and foremost wanted to address the matters that were within uh, pretty much exclusive federal jurisdiction, which are uh, fraud, uh, the integrity of the intake system, verification of offer letters, the putting into place of a recognized institution model, which we did in the fall, and we warned provinces throughout the fall that they needed to start taking measures. I had a very productive conversation with, uh, with Minister Selena Robinson 
on Friday about the work that they are going to, I'm not going to scoop her, but the work that they are doing in British Columbia to attack this. We don't want to trip over each other, so we're going to work with them. Um, if we get it wrong, we'll fix it with them, and if they get it wrong, we'll, we'll be talking about that as well. But we, we want to coordinate our, our, our activities because it is an area of shared jurisdiction. And when it comes to, uh, to making sure that these institutions are actually what they say they are and not sort of fly-by-night operations and backdoor entries into Canada, that's something that, uh, that provinces have a huge role in playing. Uh, I spoke to Ontario as well uh, with Minister Jill Dunlop. Uh, it was a good conversation, but clearly they, they, they have some work to do, but we're willing to work with them. It was, uh, again, as well, a productive conversation. They just don't have the measures in place that, for example, British Columbia is putting into place. What types for Ontario? Uh, how, the impact on Ontario, can you specify that? And then also what types well, of... Well, yeah, look, we're, we're working with them, but it'll be approximately 50% reduction. Monsieur Miller, je peux vous entendre sur la lettre de Monsieur Legault qui nous demande au gouvernement fédéral de prendre des mesures pour encadrer les migrants, d'arriver au Canada des migrants, entre autres des migrants mexicains, en mettant à nouveau un, une exigence de visa. Est-ce que c'est dans vos cartons de faire ça? C'est clair qu'on regarde les mesures qu'on peut prendre euh, comme pays pour assurer euh, qu'on qu 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 fait notre travail. Euh, en ce qui a trait aux demandeurs d'asile qui viennent, peu importe d'où ils viennent, mais du Mexique, on a vu euh, un flux énorme de gens qui s'en viennent du Mexique et puis qui réclament euh, le statut d'asile avec le, le résultat qui est bien en deçà des, euh, des moyennes qu'on voit avec les autres demandeurs d'asile. Alors, euh, c'est clair qu'un tour de vis s'impose. Est-ce que c'est un quart de tour, un, un demi-tour, deux tours? C'est à déterminer. Vous avez entendu le ministre Leblanc en, en fin de semaine euh, et qu'on qu est en train encore de réfléchir sur l'approche à prendre et la décision à prendre. Je n'ai rien de public à vous dévoiler aujourd'hui. Sachez aussi, quand on parle du Mexique, que c'est un de nos partenaires économiques euh, principaux, puis qu'une démarche diplomatique s'impose et c'est une démarche qui n'est pas encore complétée. It's clear that we've seen uh, increased volumes uh, ever since we removed the visa at the beginning of our mandate. Uh, that has come with some economic benefit as well, so we shouldn't deny that. Uh, Mexico is one of our, our principal economic partners, so any measures that we would take we would contemplate require uh, a diplomatic process that uh, is not yet completed. I, 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 we certainly, uh, it doesn't translate as well into English, but I said we certainly need to, to turn the screws a bit, whether it's a quarter turn or a full turn, is something that's still being determined. It's something I can't share with you publicly, uh, but know that um, we are not trying to be uh, opaque, but when we, are, when we take these measures, it's not something that we can necessarily discuss publicly because there are some bad actors that don't have the best interests of Canada at heart that will game the system. So um, we, rec we acknowledge the problem. We acknowledge that Canada has to take action, but there's some work left to do. I'll take this In two years after these measures expire, how are you hoping that the world will be different? What's going to happen in the meantime? Well, look, we've got two years to actually get the ship in order. Uh, it, it's a bit of a mess, and uh, it's, it's, it's time to rein it in. So um, this is something we will, you know, these are, even though we've put a lot of thought into this, these are still very, pretty much blunt measures from the federal, federal government. We're, we're playing with, um, with taps that we're turning on and turning off and, and allocating between province. Uh, so it's, it, did we get it right? We'll see. Uh, but we need to work with provinces in the meantime to make sure that they are doing their jobs. There have been provincial auditor general reports that have laid out in, in, in much more detail than I could lay out to you here today. The measures need to be taken to make sure that this is a system that has some integrity to it. Um, it, is, it, is, it is not the intention uh, of this program to have sham commerce degrees or business degrees that are sitting on top of a massage parlor uh, that someone doesn't even go to and then they come into the province and drive an Uber. If you need a dedicated channel for Uber drivers in Canada, I can design that, but that isn't the intention of an international student program. So we're, this is something we need to rein in. They exist, those, those institutions need to be shut down, and it's up to the provinces to do it. We are, absolutely. Uh, this has been very, very lucrative, uh, and, it's, and it's certainly something that um, private colleges have made a lot of money out of. Uh, again, I'm not the Minister of Post-Secondary Education Underfunding, uh, the Minister of Immigration, and clearly 
uh, in, the, in the last decade or so, even, lo even longer, post-secondary institutions in Canada have been underfunded by provinces. And these institutions are smart, uh, and they've gone and they've seen that they can get tuition fees that are four or five times more than what my kids pay at McGill or Acadia, um, and they've made money off it. Uh, they haven't necessarily provided the student experience that was promised to these people who brought in, uh, and there's been some. There's been the path of least resistance as well. The 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 source countries are not particularly diverse. We've been banking on uh, looking at the global middle class, upper middle class, um, and people have made money off it. So it's it's a system that has some real integrity issues. It has ecosystem incentives and perverse incentives, and it's something that that we need to address. And then there's clear instances of people that have been um, just making money hand over over fist about this, but. Again, we don't want our best top academic institutions to be penalized. It's why we have exemptions for masters and PhD students, um, because those are the bright people that we need to retain. And now, now you will hear from some provinces quite clearly that there are some trade schools that they will want to exempt or give postgraduate work permits to, because that is where some of the needs are, whether it's in nursing or healthcare or in construction. But what I say to them is we'll work with them, uh, and, and, and we'll work with them to get this done. Right. Rafi, just, I just want to repeat in French. Je vais essayer de répéter le système choix. Ce que j'ai dit en anglais, sans faire de la soi-disant translation. Je ne suis pas le ministre du financement de l'éducation postsecondaire. C'est clair qu'il y a le potentiel d'avoir un impact sur les institutions. Ce sont des institutions qui sont intelligentes. Ils savent qu'ils peuvent, euh, ils peuvent avoir des frais de scolarité qui sont quatre, cinq fois euh, plus hauts que ce que mes enfants payent à McGill ou à Acadia. Euh, et puis, ont agi en conséquence. Donc, ils ont renfloué les coffres. Et euh, c'est clair que depuis au-delà d'une décennie, les provinces sous-financent euh, l'éducation postsecondaire à, à, travers, à travers le Canada. D'autres plus, plus que, que certaines provinces plus que d'autres. Et, et, et les, ces institutions ont, ont, ont agi en conséquence. Donc, la réalité, c'est qu'il va y avoir un impact, euh, mais c'est un système qui n'a pas été désigné pour avoir euh, certainement ce, ce, ce flux de gens, surtout avec le niveau de, euh, de diversité des pays sources. Euh, c'est clair qu'il y, y a une classe moyenne globale où les institutions ont un, un permis de travail qui sont insensés. Oh well, we're working. I, you know, I've, I've had some very production, productive conversations with uh, with Mayor Chow, um, and it's work that I think is going to continue. The, the, we actually have a very good working relationship with their teams, uh, and and we're always. That, um, I'm prepared to announce publicly. So, guys, uh, we know that interestingly, uh, the, the long view, these collections, collections have been. I, you know, especially with the public-private partnerships, I have been expecting this for some time. Anil, if you just joined, please go through the video, which is posted on a Facebook. I did a live session, okay? Okay, guys, now you can unmute yourself and you can chat. So kindly request all the people who have joined the Zoom to post a short message in the Zoom chat and your query. Please make sure that you also write your query and I will follow. So here we have first, I think we have Madan from Toronto. Madan? So you guys can unmute. So I have Madan from Toronto and then I have Rakesh from Toronto and Venkatesh here and Shalini Ratnam from Toronto. Any of you guys, please, if you are here. Hi, Gautam Sadia. This is Rakesh from Toronto. Yes, Rakesh, please tell me. So just a small query regarding the PR. So I've been completed my two years of study permit. Currently, I'm working right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm working for the last two months. But my wife came to Canada as a spouse work permit. Uh, she has completed one year of Canadian experience. So mm -hmm. she, I mean, she is in the, I mean, her role is falling in a tier zero category. She's working as a finance manager. Like including mm -hmm. current experience, she has 10 years of experience into finance. So I just want to take your opinion. Like, should I apply PR for her? Like, should I wait for my work experience to complete? It all depends on your score. But again, recently, if you look at yesterday, right? Yesterday, uh, sorry, uh, Friday, there was a update. Mm -hmm. So there are federal programs and provincial programs, right? So under the federal program, if your wife 
as we know, the scores have been very high due to the targeted draws. Right. Okay. Uh, so under the federal program, if she is reaching around 480 plus, she might have a chance. Uh, but the thing is that I, I mean, I'm not really right. Sure. So if she is not reaching 480, it doesn't make sense, but still she can be in the pool. Second, yesterday mm -hmm. uh, on Friday, there was a draw international employer job offer foreign worker stream. So if your wife has a job here in Canada, mm -hmm. and if she previously had two years work experience in the same knock in India, mm -hmm. she will qualify for this provincial nominee program. So she can, again, we don't know. The last time this draw happened was March. I think in 2022, they had a general occupation draw. Would it happen today? We don't really know about. Okay, so I have one query. Does the CRS points vary based on the tier codes? Because in Google it says like for tier zero you'll be getting additional two hundred points, whereas one two three you'll. That get is, if you have an LMIA. Oh. Job of. Okay, not. Uh, hello. Not not in that. Not in that, sir. Okay. I mean, even not in that. Okay. Got okay. It, sir. Only if you will get points for the job. Only if it is an LMIA. Other than that, it will not. Oh, Google, it says very. I mean, if you have a manager designation, you'll get 200 points. Whereas that Again, one... it is LMIA, Rakesh. It is not Google. It is LMIA. If you have a job offer supported with them, LMIA, if it is in a tier zero position, you will get points. And just a job. If your wife is working in a job, it will not give. Only an LMIA approved job offer will give 200 points or 50 points. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you so much. Good. Hi, Gautam, sir. Uh, Bita, again, please have some common sense. I have requested many times to post a short message in the Zoom chat with your query, and I will follow the order of the messages. You know, there are so many people who have been waiting here. So let's follow the order of the messages posted. TK, share, please. No offense. But again, post. Don't raise hands. Post your message in the Zoom chat. Okay. See, we are giving free consultation every day. Nobody does this in Canada. We are here till 12 o'clock and we will talk about this. Okay. Even if it is one o'clock, I will talk today. Okay. So I have Madan here. Madan? Madan is still here. If not, then I will skip it. Rakesh, I just talked. Venkat, are you here, Venkat? Venkat, uh, my so bond. Venkat from Vishakapatnam or Torrent? Venkat from Vishakapatnam. There is one Venkat yeah. from Vishakapatnam. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Hi, hi. Hello, Venkat. Welcome, sir. It's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, I'm uh, regularly watching your videos. Uh, thing is, like, uh, I'm part of uh, WhatsApp member for CIP study abroad. So I'm seeing that uh, every time, like, uh, I'm an MBA qualified and uh, carrying it's a 14 plus years of experience in finance and accounts in India. Uh, two years back, I, I mean, I did that IELTS for the general and I applied for, um, a sketch one, but I mm -hmm. didn't get any opportunity to get it that draft. So now I have seen that today it is like a PNP program. Um, as I'm saying that, like, uh, my age is around 42 years, um, with the MBA. So any chances to get it is a PNP. Uh, I'm okay with that. Any AIPP also, I'm okay with that. I'm not only specific to that respective PNP. See, again, most, except Saskatchewan, most other PNPs will require an employer. Okay. 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 Hello. Yeah, so, except Saskatchewan, most jobs will require an employer to support you. So most PNPs here will give jobs to people who are currently here. So for immigration, Venkat from Vizak, I will give you an email. We please schedule a separate meeting. And we can, based on your profile, we can go. This is a general QA session, limited yeah. time here. So please check in. Okay. Yes, sir. No problem. Yeah. Okay, Thank but you. again, remember, more PNPs, except Saskatchewan, there are limited options, but most PNPs 
will require a job offer, valid job offer. So AIP, see, when there are 1 million people in Canada looking for jobs, right? Why would an employer bring somebody from India unless you have a skill set which nobody has here? Okay. So for PR, please post your queries to info at CIPimmigration.com. We'll set up a consultation and we'll take it forward from there. Okay. Sure, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay. And we have Shalini. Shalini, are you here, Shalini? Shalini Ratnam. No, okay. Venkat from Rohit Patel. Rohit, not now. Rohit, in the afternoon, please. Okay. If you are still here, Rohit, let's connect in the afternoon. I said tomorrow we can discuss about that, but if you're worried, we can have a quick uh, discussion today. But I said tomorrow we can work on that. So next question is Gokula Krishna Selvan Gokul. Yeah, hi uh, Gautam sir. How are you doing? I'm I'm okay, Gokul. So uh, do you need a job offer for PGW Hope? Yes. So it is job in any tier, tier zero to three, tier, sorry, tier zero to five to extend your Spouse dependent visas. Okay. Uh, uh, sir, actually, I am currently an international student uh, going to be graduated in April. Uh, I've applied my spousal visa already and it's in process. It's almost two half months and uh, I, I expect in next two weeks I'll be getting a response. Uh, so as of now, she, she would be getting it until September. Uh, so she is planning to join by May. So after May or June, if I want to extend her uh, spousal visa, um, should I have to? I mean, uh, should I have to show the employment job offer? Because at that time, I'll be on PGWP. That is what I exactly told you, Gokula Krishna. For you to extend your dependence, when you are in a when you are in a student, it is not required. Okay, but. Okay. When you go, when you finish your studies and when you are on a postgraduate work permit, mm -hmm. you will be required to provide a full time job in tier zero to tier five. Okay. Or uh, is there any chance I can, if when I'm applying for the PGWP, can I do it jointly? You have a job, uh, we can, you can apply. Reach out to us. Okay. When you are planning to apply, and we'll be happy to help you. Okay, but job is important. If you don't have a job, full-time job, you will not be able to extend. Okay, and the job has to be in the uh, in the tier category of uh, zero one two, is it or, or yes, any, any, okay. tier zero to five, any category. Oh, zero to five, any category. Okay, okay, full time. As of now, a lot of things changing. I hope they will not yeah. change that. Let's wait and see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, yeah. Harini Tang Tangarasu. Harini. Hi, Gautam sir. How are you? I'm good. So for all the immigration queries, kindly request if it is something short, I'll be happy to help you here. But for all the immigration queries, request you guys to please, unless you if you are a CIP student, you can join anytime till the end of, uh, you know, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. But for others who are not from CIP, please post, yeah, request, you request you to send an email and schedule a consultation on this, okay? So, yeah, so, yeah, please go ahead, Tharini. Are you from CIP, Tharini? Tharini? Yes, yes, uh, Gautam right. sir, I am a proud SIP student. Yeah. Thank you. So yes. for all the CIP students from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., you don't have to wait here. Okay. Uh, okay. But yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, sir. I will just uh, ensure that I'm going through the other right channel, but uh, it is a quick question, sir. Just. Uh... Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I have, I'm an international student where I studied a, a postgrad, where I studied a 
diploma, PG diploma and got a postgraduate work permit and secured a full time job. Right now I'm working. It has been five months. Uh, I am looking to apply in a OANP where uh, an international student job offer full time. But I'm wondering, uh, I have a couple of questions in that. I'm planning to give my IELTS in upcoming months. So before that, so, mm -hmm. Rini, before mm -hmm. that, you should check with your employer. Yes, they are ready to give the employer yeah. form, sir. Second, yeah, they are with their... you should have mm -hmm. at least, right? Uh -huh. There is also a point-based system there internally, right? In the Ontario ONP. Yes, sir, that's right. I checked in that I am getting around 60 points, sir. Is that what you are looking for? That is good. Okay. So what is your query here? Uh, yeah. My question is, can I uh, go ahead and get the employer form now itself and then apply for the OANP nomination or should I wait for my OAN nomination to be processed and then go with the employer form? Because I'm not sure whether the employer form will expire or just have a date or something with, with deals with OANP. You know, <laughs> Yeah, you know, if your employer is willing, you will have 14 days to apply. So mm -hmm. get the portal. See, the draws are very inconsistent. Sometimes, see, what has been the focus till now? The focus, most of the jobs focus has been IT, mm -hmm. healthcare, and skill trades. Okay, sir. Uh, I think I'm fortunate okay. I am being part of uh, IT, maybe. I'm a software engineer, which comes in. And that is good. IT. So, no harm in having this letter. Mm -hmm. Just in case your employer might change their mind. So, go ahead and get this employment letter. <coughs> yeah, in, that's why I am worried. I'm not sure. Yes, sir. That's why I need your advice. I'm not sure whether it has an expiry date or will government ask me to have the latest one. So, I thought of maybe I can get the secured form first and then apply because I have a time 10 days time now I thought of utilizing that uh, is that okay if I get the employer form and then apply yes okay all right sir thank you so much uh, my other question is apart from this uh, I'm hearing that there is a non-express entry way to get the PR I'm not sure whether yes, this sir, is so right all the students discuss. who are applying under the OANP mm -hmm. will have to apply under the non-express entry Huh? Okay, it is when I am applying for OA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for CIP students, we give 50% discount for our services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, sir. So. If you would like to take our services, please reach out to info at okay, CIP so. immigration .com and we will take it. Okay, given for the SIP students, should I mail to you? Yeah, we, we because we have another RCIC. See, my time is very limited. So I will not okay. be able to take up all the cases. So we have Alex from our team, who is an mm -hmm. RTIC, and he will be the one who will be taking up the cases. Okay, sir. Uh, so on the lighter note, if I am going to apply for OANP, I should apply for a uh, express entry, non ex non express entry profile as well. That is what uh, the conclusion no, is. So you will have to basically submitting your PR after you receive your notification. At this time, you know there is nothing you can do there. Okay. okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, there okay, is no is such kind of making... profile where you are just waiting. That is a mm -hmm. process where after you receive your provincial nomination through the okay. non-express expression of interest stream, you will have to submit. At this time, there is nothing you can do. All right. All right, sir. Thank you so much. That has been helpful, sir. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Take care. So I kindly request all the people who have joined the Zoom meeting to post a short message, your name, the city you are from, and your query. Okay. Vidisha Tanna. Vidisha, are you here? Yes, sir. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Vidisha. Yeah, so sir, I'm a current CIP student and uh, I am uh, currently in touch with Shivani for my uh, spousal open work permit extension. I just wanted mm -hmm. to confirm here that currently I'm on a PGWP, which will be ending in on May. And uh, I will be looking to extend my work permit by applying a dependent visa. So my spouse has a full-time job currently and he has also completed his master. So the current rule that 
was announced today won't apply to my profile, right? For current students, it will not apply. Who are already in Canada, it will not apply. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. That That's it. That was the only question I had. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sheikh, are you here, Sheikh? Hi, Gautam, sir. Yeah, I'm here, sir. So, yeah, uh, yes, hi, sir, how are you? Me. So, yeah, so my question was, like, currently I'm a student here in Conestoga, and I want to apply for my uh, spouse open work permit, I mean, like, for my wife, and as the new rules came in today, so this will not applicable to... Uh, to me, right, so that I can launch my spouse for open current work students, permit. For current students, as we understand, you know, this is an unfolding update. Okay. New update. Let's let's see. But for current students who are already in Canada, it should not make any difference. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. And um, I need uh, someone help. Like I'm planning to take a second course in September. So um, I can go ahead with that. And then as I'm in Canada already, so this rule will not applicable, right? Yeah. So okay. and which college one in program are you running? No, I reached to one of these uh, CIP, Sandeep. But I'm looking for something in uh, York University, uh, like a one-year program for September. But I have um, I need someone who can guide me. Can I have your number, Sheikh? Yeah. Uh, the Canadian number, Can you type it in the chat? We, we just live yeah. you, so post it in the Zoom chat eight minutes. Yeah, sure. And one more Can thing, sir, I need, yeah, I'm just pinging my number. And, and one more thing, I need help in launching a visiting visa for my mother. So uh, you guys will take sure. care of visiting visa? Sure, yes, definitely. Okay. So I need help in these two things, sir. Thank you. Sure, no problem. We'll take care of it. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. So you want me to contact someone or someone will reach out to me? Yeah, we'll have, uh, I'll have in the afternoon after the Zoom, we'll reach out. Okay. Okay. Can I have your Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'll just copy it to you. Thank you so, so much, sir. She, yeah, you're welcome, Sheikh. Yeah. I'll yes. have, we'll connect in the afternoon, okay? Sure, sir. Yeah. Sir, I'm so sorry. I have one more question left. So my student visa is expiring in uh, the April 30th. And I need, I want to apply for extension of my study permit. So I need that help to, to apply for a study permit extension. Uh, uh, so, so what my, do you need? Sorry? No, my student visa is expiring in April uh, 30th. And I need okay. help in applying for a study permit extension post, which I want to uh, uh, no, uh, take care of things here. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, we will will be happy to help you with everything, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Dinesh, are you here, Dinesh? Yes, sir. I'm Dinesh, here, sir. Uh, yes, Dinesh. Yeah, please go ahead. Tell me. Sir, uh, I want to study diploma in 2025. So as of now, as what, a is, new... uh -huh. what is your current profile, Dinesh? Uh, I completed my VTech in 2014 in SRM, Chennai. And later I worked for Amazon for three years. What is your so, education? Computer science. Sir. Computer science, VTech. Yeah, definitely. See, we can still make it for May intake. We can make it for September intake. And if you want for 25, we'll definitely... No, sir. My question you. is uh, particularly I'm asking uh, whether uh, I will be eligible as of new rules today. I have seen some in the news. Uh, that, uh, yes, we, this is an unfolding news. Sir. As of now, PG eligibility for private colleges have been. So there are colleges, affiliated colleges in Canada. Okay. Which are small campuses. 
the pg eligibility for those public private partners will be uh, will will be stopped but for public institutions it is no issue okay sir okay sir that's my only question thank you sir yeah sure dinesh reach out to us if you require assistance we'll be happy to help you with the process okay sir thank you yeah sumit yadav sumit you got recently rejected for australia you had applied for a bit course now you want to apply in canada sumit are you here sumit yes sir i am here i just yes, recently sumit. got rejected from australia then can i apply for canada is there yes, any possible what is your bachelor stream and percentage i just passed my plus 2 level in 2022 and now i want to apply for btech or bit But, in personally i don't see because of the current system yeah. in theory of gujarat se ho where are you from i am from nepal kathmandu nepal se are you in touch with raj from our team yes i don't get you sir can you explain me again we have an office in nepal are you in touch with raj from our nepal team no sir i don't know okay. sir raj is here raj are you here raj yes sir good morning so we have an office in uh, in nepal yeah kathmandu uh, in kathmandu in new banish yes sir. okay so can can you leave your yes, number sir. yes sir simply simply so we are from same place but i don't know him yeah i guess you yeah, i was there actually in nepal in uh, november really but we don't need that time yeah so happy yeah. to help uh, can uh, sumit can you share your number and uh, raj from our nepal team will connect with you okay sir i am sharing my number okay raj please connect with sumit and sumit uh, go to the office and we'll be happy to help you yes please sure yeah. Okay, sir. I will visit the office tomorrow at mm -hmm. morning. Yeah, sure. sure, so yeah, you can. Yeah, see you there. Okay, next after Sumit, we have Dinesh from Vijaywada. I just talked to Dinesh. Shravani from Vishakhapatnam. So Shravani, no, it will not affect current student summer. Should be fine. Okay. Chetan regarding spousal open work permit. Chetan, yes, please. uh hi sir good morning um good morning sir actually uh i've read the news uh i've read the article about the uh limitations on yeah, again for spouse open work, work permit uh public institutions masters they will be eligible but for all the students who are already here in canada it should be fine are you here in canada no sir i'm in usa my wife is studying in uh york university So am I eligible ah, for applying? She's already for you, uh, Chet, and you are. It should be fine. You're currently your wife is already studying, so it should be fine. Okay, yeah. let's wait for Thank the updates, and we can take it forward from there. Sandeep is Shivani here, Sandeep? Hello, Sandeep. 
Sandeep or anybody from CIP team here? Yes, sir. Tell me, please. Yes, sir. I, I need Shivani, please. Shivani, can you have Bharat is here? He is out of, uh, you know, he had his, uh, he applied directly and he had refused his uh, spouse open work permit. Can you please ask Shivani to connect with Bharat and start, submit his, start his application, please? Okay, sir. I will call Shivani ma'am and I will ask her to connect with Bharat. Okay. Yeah. Bharat, Shivani ji will connect. Please exit from the meeting, ship. Bharat. Okay. Hello. So, Chetan, your wife is already here in Canada. Sir, Gautam, Gautam. Not, let, let's wait for a minute. Yeah. Yes, Bharat. Oh, uh, this is my another, wife. Um, uh, oh, yes. Samiksha? Yes, Bharat, tell me, please. Yeah, I haven't applied for the open work permitted, uh, like dependent visa. I'm about to apply and uh, I came to know from okay, the HR this is that... Another uh, part of the Sorry, I thought it was here. Please wait. Uh -huh. So please wait for your turn. We had another Bharat who had applied recently and he got his refusal. Uh -huh. Just talk to Chetan. Chetan, it should be fine. No issues. Okay. Yeah, Uma. 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 Who is from Uma? 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 Anna, Nina. Mano, Mana. Okay, Uma, big news. Kutta Chala Vondi. Other news update goes some much together. Chudama, I want to understand your, uh, your opinion and join Ayano. But uh, that's yes. Uh, news uh, I didn't understand what was for a second. Yeah, Jay Sri Ram. Jay Sri Ram. <laughs> Uh, news karnam we dress ala more attractive and which in the left a message. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, brother. Take care. Okay, yeah, we'll connect you. in the evening. No, no, that's okay. We can catch up later. That's okay. Bye. Yeah, Suman Bandari. Suman, I think we just talked right with you, or this is another Suman. Suman Bandari from Nepal, please. Suman? Suman Bandari from Nepal. I see him, but he might be busy. Okay, let's go to the next one. I just talked to Shri. Yes. Sorry. Suman? It's Anna. You yeah, skipped Anna. me. You skipped Anna, me. Anna, you skipped me. I was... 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 Ah, oh, okay. I just... You gave me a link. There's a link in Toronto from 9 to 12, so I didn't know when to get it. No, 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 с 9 утра до 9 вечера всегда можете присоединиться. Скажи, пожалуйста. Да, я зарегистрировалась на IELTS. У меня в феврале IELTS. И я хотела спросить, потому что я прочитала статью, которую вы мне скинули. Мне с работой помогут. Они мне заполнят все документы, которые нужны. И мне просто было интересно, мне стоит подождать, пока у меня год будет uh, работы, опыт, или мне можно подаваться уже на expression of interest for the program? Вот если бы ты уже подала, да, ну, мы не знаем, когда еще будут, вот вчера как раз было, да, there are different streams in ONP. One is the employed job offer stream, second is the international student stream, third is not relevant, it is employer in demand is for students who are tier four to tier five. Okay. So for yep. those students, yeah, for those students, tier one and uh, for you, you you can submit your expression of interest in employer job offer foreign worker stream. And you can okay. also submit your in the international student stream, employer foreign job offer foreign worker stream. There was a draw okay, on so Friday. So I just don't understand how to understand when to apply. Like, I don't understand when to look at the draw and like, what should I do it like today? Different requirements. There is no one set of requirement here. Okay. So what we can do is I will have Sandeep connect you with you, Anna. So for CIP students, we have, uh, you know, we have Alex from a team. He speaks Ukrainian. We have Sandeep. So for CIP students, for this, we have a 50% discount in our services for the ONP immigration and this. Uh, I will have uh, you, you know, just send an email and I will have mm -hmm. you connect with Alex from our team and he yeah, can take I'm it forward. Sure. No harm in having your 
the key uh, you know your uh, your profile started so should i send okay. just email saying yeah just send an email i'm uh, anna uh, i'm a cip student from ukraine I uh, would like to know more about this uh, PNP and uh, submit the application. Okay. Okay. And for the application, I need the job employment form, right? Like I have to get a form first. No, no, no. Form it. At no, this no, time, no. Okay. you don't need anything. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. So I just talked to Sum Suman Bandari from Nepal. I don't see him here. Okay, Sheikh Samran. Smaran, Smaran, are you here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes, Smaran, please tell me. Yeah, I just had a doubt, sir. Like, uh, uh, does construction project coordinators or the supervisors uh, uh, comes under STEM? STEM scheme because I have a bachelor's degree back in India and now I have a post graduation diploma from London. So, is it eligible for STEM brain for applying during applying PR or uh, uh, which stream is best uh, for construction kind of works? Yeah, let's let's go in. A lot of things happening. I'm trying to talk to you guys and also follow the updates. Oh, interesting day today. Okay, so let's look into the STEM. Yes. Okay. yes. So express entry draw rounds of invitation. And if you go down, you will see category-based invitations. And here in STEM draws. So civil engineers, right, are eligible. You are a civil engineer, right? But you are into the construction project management. Yes, yes, right, sir, right. Yeah, so if you see, the, the, so these are all the jobs which are eligible. Okay. Architects. Architecture and science managers, unfortunately, civil engineers. So please, I think only this will be eligible. Uh, project managers, I'm not sure that falls under. So please go through this. So if you look into the civil engineers now, you will see all the different titles. So, yeah, if you go here, See, if you see here, yeah, construction does it, if it says construction project engineer, it will fall in that. Okay. So if if your if your job currently is a construction project engineer or construct, that will help you. So these are all the job titles. Let me give you this link. Okay. Yes, yes, sure, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Where are you? Are you in India now? No, no, no. I'm in Canada. Like, I'm already currently graduating. So, no, so I haven't. So. Sure. Please go ahead. Well, I'm happy that you are in that. If your employer yeah. is supporting you, then it should work for you. Okay. Uh, and I have one more doubt. Like, uh, if we, after graduation, if we move to Alberta, do, uh, do I lose my PNP points here in, in Ontario? No, you will not. So some of the streams, you should you should have prior co connect with Ontario province. You should be actively looking. So under the employer job offer stream, under the international student stream, you should have an intent. You should be able to prove your intent to live in Ontario. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay.
Okay, so after uh, Suman, I just talked to Smaran and Rakesh. Rakesh, are you here? Rakesh Kammam, spousal visa. Rakesh, are you here, Rakesh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, I'm currently in an interesting situation here. I have a work, a study permit until March 2024, but I'm done with my studies already in December 2023. I flew back to India to get married. Now I am married. I have to fly back to Canada in February, precisely on February 5th. And in next one month, my study permit is going to get expired. And how would like how like how can I apply for my spousal visa? So am I considered as a current student or how is that going to be? So what is your current status? It's study permit until uh March thirteenth. Your study permit, right? Yeah. And after that, you'll be on a PGWP. Correct. Yeah. So the limitation, as I understand, will only be to students. And it does not affect students who are already in Canada. Mm -hmm. And if you are on PGWP, you should be eligible to apply for your postgraduate work permit. Again, we have news updating. We don't really know what it is. I hope, uh, you know, it is only while they are limiting for students and not students after graduation. So let's look into this and see what is happening. Okay. Okay. If at all, uh, if I have to apply for spouse visa after getting work permit, should I have a three months of, uh, study, I mean, employment history or is it only one month? It is not really mandatory. As long as you have a full-time job, year zero to three, it should be fine. Cool. Cool. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yeah. Take care. Okay, after Rakesh, we have Raj Divya Raj. Hi. Raj morning, Divya sir. Raj. Good morning, Raj. Uh, yeah, sir. Actually, uh, I have one doubt, actually. Uh, I had applied for the study permit extension on the 27th of October, along with my mm -hmm. wife, spouse of one work for permit. And we didn't hear any back from the IRCC. Uh, yesterday, I had generated the waveform for my concern, actually. So, sir, uh, what I have to do, like, it's 87 days uh, already, like, passed from the normal standard time. See, when things pass normal time right the only thing what you can do is to go through your local mp office raise web form is one option second go to your local mp office and have them check Okay, and how I can find out the like local MP office nearer to me? Like I use it's not your address. Screen. Just Google where your okay. address is, and mm -hmm. you will see the MP office. Email them, call them, or visit their office and tell them I have applied for my postgraduate work permit, right? Or uh, extension, no, study permit extension. extension of study permit extension along with your wife, and it's been on twenty seventh October. Yeah, so I have not received any update. So please check in with IRCC and help me. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, Thank let you. me know if it goes fast. Yeah, sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Yeah. So I have Bharat. This is the second Bharat. Sorry for the confusion, Bharat. Yeah, please tell me. Yeah, no problem, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Right now, uh, I am on a uh, work permit, uh, which is going to expire in work the Work permit, you mean PGWP? No, sir. Uh, my open work permit is based on my uh, wife's study permit previously. 
so it is going to expire this march and my wife got a new postgraduate work permit and she just uh, got a job recently and i am going to apply but uh, when i asked the pay slip and the letter from the hr uh, she told that uh, they have been uh, like their company is new and they have only filed one year of tax so just check uh, yeah. with the uh, immigration lawyer like whether uh, this can be useful or not so so your, your what is your wife's status now post graduate work permit sir pgwp and you are a student no i am uh, on work permit sir i came to canada no, so you are on sowp and your wife is on pgwp yes sir okay does she, so what is your query uh, like uh, her uh, she got a job recently and the company has filed the tax for only one year and the hr want yeah, to confirm fine. with immigration lawyer with like whether it is okay or not for the for the open work permit it is okay it will absolutely not impact ah it will not affect anything okay, it will sir. not affect. sir i have one more query for my cousin uh, actually uh, he got an uh, rejection of uh, us uh, visa for a study permit and uh, he is gonna apply for uh, canada now but uh, he is changing his stream uh, in india he had uh, like he was in mechanical engineer and right now he is moving to computers does it have much effect or uh, how it is going to happen i have him connect bharat but generally you know mm -hmm. it, it, does he have work experience no sir uh, he is a fresh graduate from like a graduate uh, last year yeah have him connect but generally i would advise people to have see because of the express entry targeted ross right mm -hmm. and also for getting a job in canada post graduate after studies work mm -hmm. experience is really critical okay sir okay. i would mm -hmm. definitely advise people who plan to go abroad to have at least one year work experience ah uh, okay mm okay sir sir um i just have one more query uh, right now i am learning french in quebec and i have a uh, like one of the companies offering me a noc uh, b job uh, so which, should i complete uh, like join the job uh, before completion of uh, level 6 or uh, should i complete the language program and join after the i, I uh, go to a certain level of in french what you should you suggest so see no harm in being there in the pool right so yes sir yeah go ahead and submit it doesn't make sense for you when you have a good level of french when you get the official attestation you can go mm -hmm. ahead and update no sir right now i am in level 4 the basic level of french so i i am in a confusion whether to stop the course and join a job or whether to continue the course to get a level 6 at least you should do both i am right now working in the weekend sir i am learning french during the week and working during the weekend you don't need to stop see how many hours a day will you learn french i am learning full time sir from morning 9 o'clock to 3:30 languages take a lot of time bharat even yes, you know we know what... english and will you be able to score 8777 right not everybody can so yes sir Yeah, remember your work experience is very important. French is only secondary. Try to do it. Language only gets better with practice. Yes, sir. Right. So you know, get a job which is, for example, in which is good for the provincial nomination, and mm -hmm. you know, mechanical jobs or healthcare jobs or those kind of. What is your background, Bharat? My background is electrical, sir. I am not able to. Uh, like find any job in electrical because i don't have p engineering here so i am looking in other uh, aspects as of now so i'm not uh, like i am in a dilemma because of the job market and all i started uh, going to french class as i am in quebec oh. i took they are job, providing I... the course aha uh -huh. okay yeah, they are provide you are studying at a quebec institution which institution uh like uh, ministry of foreign affairs is providing the course sir Okay, then go ahead and continue your French 
<laughs> but it's just an add on focus on you know if you look into a job which is going to give you in the stem categories or in the omp you know skill trades or those categories you will get your pr okay like a uh, job is the main priority job should be the main priority sir uh, with the language uh, uh, provincial nomination also without the job we will not be able to move forward right you see not just with language job is important here ah uh, okay sir understood okay, okay but thank take you, care sir. and good yeah thank you sir bye bye you welcome rashwinder are you here rashwinder i think most of the students had same question so many exited already okay should i submit okay neeraj mithal neeraj are you here Neeraj, yeah, just please uh, send your passport oh. for stamping, Neeraj. Yeah, sir. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now, God, sir? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Neeraj, you can send your... Uh, uh -huh. um, yeah, send, yeah, send it, get it stamped, uh -huh. and after coming here, after coming you can apply, because you already waited for so long, you know, uh -huh. and then in, abhi unko, you have to write a letter explanation, uh -huh. uh, that my wife is doing she wants to do in a teaching job and okay. it might take delay but at the time of application let, let you know you you have no option but to go ahead and get it stamped or yahan pe aane ke baad, if you see that there is a limitation then mm -hmm. you will be asked you will you will have to apply for amendment of uh, work permit kitna time lagta hai usme sir ye uh, amendment ek lagta hai ek mahina mein ho jata hai अच्छा ठीक है और दूसरा क्वेश्चन मेरा ये है कि जब मेरी मैंने अपनी बेटी का भी अप्लाई किया था साथ में परमिट तो उसमें जब उसका भी अप्रूव होके आ गया बट व्हेन आई सी द ट्रैकर सो हर पासपोर्ट नंबर इज इनकरेक्ट सो देयर इज एन एक्स्ट्रा अल्फाबेट एट द एंड ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा कैरेक्टर एट द एंड ऑफ द पासपोर्ट तो मैंने वेब फॉर्म तो सबमिट कर दिया है बट आई मीन शुड आई सेंड द पासपोर्ट फॉर द स्टैंपिंग और एक एक लेटर लिख दो उनको कि मुझे ट्रैकर में ये दिख रहा है क्या दिख रहा है सॉरी आई डिट गेट यू जो जैसे मेरी डॉटर का वर्क परमिट आ गया है ठीक है अप्रूव होके तो उन्होंने पासपोर्ट की रिक्वेस्ट रेज की है बट व्हेन आई गो टू द आई आर आई आर सी 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 ट्रैकर पोर्टल जो ट्रैकर होता है ना उनका जहाँ पे वो आपकी डेट्स दिख, दिखाई देते हैं वर्क परमिट की एंड डेट दिखती है और पासपोर्ट नंबर भी दिखता है पासपोर्ट नंबर इज आई थिंक एप्लीक जो भी उनका होता है डॉक्यूमेंट नंबर तो डॉक्यूमेंट नंबर इज द पासपोर्ट नंबर तो वहां पर उसका जो नंबर दिखाई दे रहा है ना दैट इज इनकरेक्ट बेसिकली उसका जो पासपोर्ट है दैट्स इट्स एक्स वाई जी बट इट हैज एन एक्स्ट्रा कैरेक्टर एट इन द एंड एट द एंड ऑफ द पासपोर्ट नंबर उस ट्रैकर पोर्टल के अंदर तो ट्राई टू कनेक्ट रेज अब फॉर्म ट्राई टू कॉन्टेक्ट आई आर सी सी एंड अपडेट एट देर इज एनर एंड but uh, and also what uh, you know it should not really be a big issue but when you are at the border make sure that you uh, get your daughter's permit right she will get a visitor record or a study permit what is your daughter's age neeraj ah uh, she is 13 years old 30 she will get a study permit make sure that there are no errors in the study permit name date of birth and all this अच्छा अच्छा जो अभी पासपोर्ट की रिक्वेस्ट उन्होंने मांगी तो पासपोर्ट भेज दूं उनको क्या स्टैंपिंग के लिए और और पासपोर्ट इज नॉट रियली एन इशू दैट शुड बी फाइन राइट सी व्हाट डॉक्यूमेंट इज इंपॉर्टेंट द डॉक्यूमेंट व्हेन यू अराइव एट द एयरपोर्ट हम्म दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट अच्छा वहां पे हमें दूसरा एक डॉक्यूमेंट मिलेगा उसके अंदर जब व्हेन वी गो टू एट द पोर्ट ऑफ एंट्री या ओके ओके ठीक है तो आई बी सेंडिंग द पासपोर्ट फॉर स्टैंपिंग और वेब फॉर्म मैंने रेज कर दिया ऑलरेडी ठीक है सर एंड आई वुड से आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू अगेन फॉर फॉर योर असिस्टेंस इन द होल प्रोसेस रियली गौतम इट वाज नॉट पॉसिबल विदाउट यू और योर हेल्प रियली थैंक यू वेरी मच यू वेलकम आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दिनेश दैट यू हैव अ सेकंड चांस यू नो वी दे वर दे वाज द कोटा वाज ओनली वेरी लिमिटेड एंड ऑल द H1B होल्डर्स especially like you who have no chance of getting a green card in the us uh, yeah. you know 
is a big opportunity here in Canada. The salaries compared to the US will be lower, 25-30% lower. But you mm -hmm. can always sleep in peace that you will not have to leave the country. If you right. get your green, you can settle and you can live at peace in Canada, which is impossible in the US for Indians. Right. Right. Even I mean, for my daughter, actually, I'm worried about, worried about my daughter's status. And you know that once a daughter, once the child uh, turns 21, they, they age, they are aged out. So they yes, have to they have to leave out. Visa. So many, many uh, H1B holders are actually applying to study here in Canada. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Gautam, again. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, take care. Yeah, congratulations. Let's keep being stay in touch. Anytime you wish you have issues, please feel free to join Zoom and talk to me. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Yes, I don't see anybody else, so we are done for today. Okay. So thank you. I think, uh, you know, I, I don't see anybody. Did I miss anybody's questions? I see Mani Kura. I didn't talk to Mani. Anybody who I didn't talk to, please? Saroj, 